All right, uh, I wanted to do a video where we take the same region and then we compare what it would look like to set up an integral to find the volume rotated around the x-axis versus the same region rotated around the y-axis. So kind of a compare and contrast situation. Um, there, well, I, let's just see it. We'll, we'll talk through it. Um, I only want to do setups here. I, you know, I th feel like we've, we've done enough of the actual sort of integration and the integrals themselves here are, are honestly not too wild. Um, you know, if we see other setups that we haven't quite seen before, you know, then we'll do those. Um, but this is all relatively standard stuff. So I just want to focus on the setups here. That will save us a little time as well. Um, so let's consider the region bound by three lines. Y equals 2X, Y equals 1 half X, and Y equals 4. So that's three straight lines, um, in, in particular, of course, right? Y equals four is, is a horizontal line going straight across, uh, two times X, right? Slope is two, going up from the origin, one half X, slope is one half, going up from the origin. And so you kind of get this triangle region um, initially, right? Where sort of two X is kind of this like left boundary one half X is kind of this like lower slash like right boundary and, and Y equals four is kind of the upper boundary. Um, depending on kind of how we slice this and sort of how we do the rotations, we'll, we'll have a couple different things here. Um, and so what I want to look at then is, is just the setups to find the volumes um, when we're rotated around the X axis versus when we're rotated around the Y axis. Um, and there are some interesting challenges here and, and um, uh, Kind of pitfalls for for both of these um it, in general you might think um just because it's what we did first rotating around the x-axis is, is sort of always going to be easier um that's not necessarily always true it it depends on the information you're given it depends on the region it, it really depends on a lot of things the most unsatisfying math answer ever is hey isn't this usually the case and then uh, your math professor will probably say it depends and it's like great so kind of yes kind of no like that tells me nothing um but it depends it does it does it depends on the circumstances um in any event let's let's start to approach this let's start to attack this so so rotate it around the x-axis right so that's our kind of rotisserie style rotation so that should be Right, integral a to b, pi r squared, dx. That's kind of what we're expecting. Now, the thing that's a little bit tricky here is if I take this region, obviously this is, is has separation from the axis. So, um, you know, if I start to kind of draw this and I think of what my, my, my sort of radiuses are gonna be, this is gonna be a washer situation. meaning you're gonna have both an outer and an inner um, radius. So if A, it's gonna be washer, so you're gonna need sort of big R versus little r. Um, and what's tricky here, you might say, well, oh, okay, well, like y equals four is the upper and y equals one half x is the lower. Uh, yes, that's true from the, the value um, x equals two out to x equals eight. That's true. This thing kind of gets chopped in half a little bit, right? There, there sort of is this region where it's four over one half x, but the region from zero to two has a different setup where two x is the upper and one half x is the lower. I don't think we've actually done any of these before. You know, in theory, this can happen in it Honestly, it's just kind of annoying. It's it's not a deal breaker. Um, it just is a little bit tedious. Um, this is tricky. I'd, I'd like to be able to sort of show you the picture and the setups, but I just don't. I'm gonna have to sort of zoop, 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 shift this uh, back and forth. I'll try to do that in a way that doesn't give you motion sickness. Um, so we're gonna have two different integrals. So I'm gonna have an integral from, what did I just say, zero to two. This is, x-axis stuff, right? So this is kind of pi r squared minus pi little r squared dx plus 
a second one from two to eight. So I gotta do the entire interval from zero to eight. But because in theory, I have sort of two different situations happening. I have a different sort of outer and inner function over those two intervals. Um, we're gonna get something kind of like this. So I'll fill this information in, right? So this from zero to two, this is gonna be pi times, uh, the upper value there is my two X, so two X, right? Quantity squared minus pi times, my lower value is the one half X, quantity squared DX, plus the interval from two to eight pi, the, the upper, right? The sort of outer radius there is, is all the way up to four, just Y equals four, the constant. So that's kind of interesting, so four squared. Minus pi times the lower is still one half x. Quantity squared dx. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna leave it just like that. Obviously, two uh, x quantity squared would be four x squared. One half x squared would be one quarter. X squared, four squared is 16. Um, just to sort of leave a little bit of space. And honestly, I just want you guys to be able to see very clearly where all of those different pieces are coming from. I'm going to kind of leave that example there. Um, now, if I take the same region and I rotate it instead around the y-axis, right? So if I do the rotation, this right kind of vertical rotation. So you go in this way. Uh, that's going to be a to b pi r squared. But that's going to be a dy value. So this is going to be, right, y equals a to y equals b, the interval along the y-axis rather than the x-axis. And the nice thing about that setup for this particular example is um, if I'm looking at it from that perspective, right, my sort of inner and outer radiuses uh, are consistent the whole time. The interval now is from y value z to y value 4. The inner is going to be this y equals 2x. The outer is this y equals 1 half x. Now, you might say, if this is dy, shouldn't this stuff be x equals? And I would say, absolutely, it should. That is one thing we need to do. So we got to rewrite. So y equals 2x. So that's going to become x equals y divided by 2, right? AKA one half Y. And then the other one, right? Y equals one half X. That's gonna become X equals two Y. Uh, lo and behold, these are actually sort of inverse functions to each other, right? These uh, are, are kind of lines that have, uh, in some sense, opposite slopes. Um, they're not uh, perpendicular style opposite where it's, it's a reciprocal and it's a negative, but they have opposite slopes in the sense they have reciprocal slopes. So we actually get kind of, uh, you know, what would almost be like sister functions to the original pair that we had. So from the X perspective, right, this is now, right, X equals two times Y is my outer. And I, this is a, a big mistake. <laughs> I'm trying to write this because I don't have space. This would be x equals sort of one half times y. Um, that's kind of crammed in there, but I guess it is what it is. So the advantage on this second one is uh, we do have a little bit less complicated of a setup because we're going to go right a to b. This is purely going to be pi r squared dy because this is going from on the y-axis, right, the y-interval is from zero to four, and over that interval, the span is, oh gosh, and this is of course an inner and an outer, whoops. We have a lot of space here to be making screw-ups, right? This should be the outer, right, pi r squared minus the inner pi r squared. Um, all right, I'm not really just going to live dangerously here. So my volume should be 
integral a to b, pi big r squared minus pi little r squared dy, right? But the inner and outer radius here are not gonna be so bad. So we said the interval, the y interval is from zero to four. This is pi, my outer function is which one? Is this one right, which is x equals 2y. So, so from the x equals perspective, so then this will be subbed in. So that's 2y quantity squared minus, then the inner, right, which was Right, y equals 2x becomes x equals 1 half y, so that's my inner radius. Quantity squared. And that's with respect to y. So the setup there, um, shorter than the x rotation, if only because we just don't have to break it up into those sort of two different integrals. Um, all that stuff you'd be able to do power rule style. There's, there's, there's no kind of wild calculations happening there. Um, that stuff is kind of right down the middle. So that's two different setups for two different perspectives. In general, if you, if, if you have a region and you're sort of rotating it around the x-axis and you're sort of getting a disks, this sort of disks or washers style mental picture, you want to set it up with y equals functions. You want to set it up with a dx. You want to set it up with an interval x equals a to x equals b. If you have a region and you're rotating it around the y-axis, right, this sort of a vertical rotation, and, and you have um, something like that, you're setting it up as a disks and washers, that's kind of your mental picture, um, then you're going to want x equals style functions. You're going to want an interval from y equals a to y equals b. And you're going to want, uh, right, to do your integration with respect to y. You're going to need a dy on the end. The x's and the y's, right, should always kind of be in sync. You're not going to want to have, uh, you know, an x minus 2 quantity squared with a dy on it. it right, it's inconsistent and it, it's going to screw everything up. Um, I know it can seem like the dx's and the dy's are, are kind of just filler, but, but they really do have an impact. They're important. They're, they're sort of part of the detail work here that... Um, you know, a problem like this really makes a big difference and can actually sort of help you to understand and sort of help you see what to expect when you're doing these different setups. Um, anyway, uh, I think we're going to be able to get away with one last volume video here. Um, so I'll end this one and I'll see you in that one.